chromosomes. So birds have female heterogametic sex chromosomes, where males have two copies of the Z and females only have one, along with the female limited W chromosome. And because of this unequal pattern of inheritance, we predict that the sex chromosomes are subject to unbalanced sex-specific selection and will become sexualized. So in birds, because the Z is present more often in males than in females, we might expect dominant alleles on the Z chromosome to be more often selected for their male-specific effects. And typically, we test whether a sex chromosome has been sexualized by using gene expression patterns. And this is because we expect the majority of gene expression to be correlated between males and females. So a shift in expression in one sex would result in a corresponding shift in expression in the other sex. However, sexual conflict can break down this correlation and uncouple expression between males and females, resulting in this sex-biased gene expression that we can see here. And typically we think of uh, male-biased genes as having a male benefit effect and female-biased genes as having female benefit effect. So if the Z chromosome were being selected for its male benefit effects, then we might expect to see an enrichment of male-biased genes on the Z. But the situation is slightly more complicated in birds because they actually lack a complete sex chromosome dosage compensation mechanism. So in, unlike in other species, um, and like in some other species, there's no global mechanism in order to compensate the differences in Z chromosome dose between males and females. So purely because females have only one copy of the Z, they have significantly lower expression of the Z than males, and also when compared to the autosomes. And so because of this difference in dosage, the majority of genes on the Z are male biased in expression. So this means that you can't really do comparisons of Z chromosome to autosomal expression to infer if the Z has been sexualized. But one way around this is to do comparisons within the Z chromosome. And this is because the Z evolves in a stepwise process that I'll explain to you now. So the sex chromosomes evolve from an identical ancestral pair of autosomes. And recombination between the Z and the W chromosomes is suppressed in a stepwise process. And as recombination is suppressed, the Z and the W sequences begin to differentiate and diverge. And we can call these different regions here strata. And so you can actually date when recombination was suppressed, so the age of these different strata, using neutral sequence divergence between Z and W orthologs. So in this example, stratum 1 is the oldest and has been isolated from recombination for the longest amount of time. So you'd expect to see the largest degree of neutral divergence between Z and W orthologs in this region. And in contrast, stratum 4 is the youngest and therefore the least differentiated. So I was actually able to characterize this evolutionary history of the chicken Z chromosome using newly identified Z and W orthologs. So this is neutral divergence between those Z and W orthologs plotted against their physical position on the chicken Z chromosome. And you can see that they cluster into four distinct strata that indicate that the chicken Z chromosome was formed by up to four recombination suppression events over the course of 130 million years. So the oldest strata is here, and the most recent one here at the tip. So now we've established this evolutionary history, we can start to compare patterns of gene expression across these four regions in order to test whether the Z has been sexualized. So this is average male-biased expression for all genes within each of these four strata plotted against the age of that region. So oldest strata here, youngest one here, and contains maybe about 40 Z-linked genes. And you can see that male-biased expression increases over time on the Z, which is consistent with the effects of masculinizing selection, and it indicates that the Z chromosome is a locus of sexual conflict and is being selected for its male-specific effects. But one of the things I'm sure you've noticed is that this is an extremely slow process, occurring over the period of 130 million years. So this really brings me to the next question that I wanted to address, was whether these um, sex chromosomes mechanisms of sex chromosome evolution that I've just described to you are conserved across much shorter evolutionary time frames. So specifically, I was interested in looking at the mode and rate of recombination suppression between the Z and W chromosomes, so whether the four chicken strata are conserved in other species. And given that the process of masculinization appears to be extremely slow, what actually
is the role of sexual selection in driving Z chromosome evolution over much shorter evolutionary time frames. So I tried to answer these questions using a clade of birds called the Galloanserae, which are made up of the Anseriforms, which are the waterfowl, and the Galliforms, which are the landfowl. And we have whole genome transcriptomic data for male and female adults for each of these six species. And they're the perfect clade for studying the shorter term dynamics of Z chromosome evolution, because they last shared a common ancestor only 90 million years ago, which is relatively recent given how old the avian sex chromosomes are. And there's also a huge degree of variation in sexual selection across these species. So the duck is sexually dimorphic, there's a huge degree of promiscuity and sperm competition, but the goose <coughs> is um, monogamous and sexually monomorphic. So the first question that I wanted to address was this rate of recombination suppression between the Z and W chromosomes. So are these four strata in the chicken conserved across this clade? Or is recombination being suppressed independently in different lineages? So there's no complete W chromosome assembly for any of the six species that I just showed you. But using a combination of bioinformatic approaches with the transcriptomic data that we have, I was able to identify Z and W linked orthologs in the turkey and the duck. And then you can actually use a phylogenetic approach with these newly identified Z and W orthologs in order to assess when recombination was suppressed. So this is a gene tree for a ZW orthologue located in the oldest strata here. And you can see that the duck and chicken W linked orthologues in red cluster separately from the Z linked orthologues in blue. And this indicates that recombination was suppressed in the common ancestor of these species. You see exactly the same pattern when you look at the second oldest stratum, where the W linked orthologues cluster together in red separately from the Z linked orthologues. So this indicates that these two oldest strata evolved in the common ancestor of this clade and are conserved across these species. However, you see a very different pattern when you look at the youngest two strata. So this is a gene tree for this ZW ortholog here. And you can see immediately it looks very different from the above two gene trees. And this is because the duck, Z and W orthologs cluster together separately from the chicken and the turkey. And so this clustering by species and not by sex chromosome indicates that recombination was suppressed independently in these two lineages. So you can build gene trees for all of these Z and W orthologs, and collectively they show that there's been multiple recombination suppression events between the Z and the W independently across this clade. And so collectively it really shows that ZW divergence is an extremely fluid process and um, can proceed multiply independent times in different lineages. So the final question that I wanted to address was the role of sexual selection in shaping short-term evolution of the Z chromosome. So higher rates of coding sequence divergence have been observed across the Z in a number of different species. And this is also the case for the Galloanserae, where we see um, a significantly higher DNDS or rate of Z chromosome divergence for Z linked genes relative to autosomal genes. And we can call this the faster Z effect. Mm -hmm. But the thing that's really cool is that the magnitude of this faster Z effect, or relative rate of Z chromosome divergence, is uh, significantly and positively correlated to two proxies of promiscuity residual testes weight and sperm number. And these two proxies, um, and these two measures, are widely used proxies the intensity of sperm competition and therefore promiscuity. And these p-values have been corrected uh, for uh, phylogeny. So as promiscuity increases, the rate of Z chromosome divergence also increases. And there are two alternative um, explanations to explain this pattern. The first is that faster Z might be driven by selection. And this is because selection can act more efficiently on recessive mutations in females which only have one copy of the Z chromosome. And under this scenario, faster Z is adaptive. Now on the other hand, the Z chromosome has an effective population size three quarters that of the autosomes. And therefore we might expect to see relaxed purifying selection acting on the Z. And so under this scenario, faster Z is neutral and driven by elevated levels of genetic drift. And interestingly, if faster Z were neutral, 
this might actually explain the pattern that we observe. And this is because under monogamy, when variance in male and female mating success is equal, the Z has an effective population size three quarters that of the autosomes. However, under increasing promiscuity, which is typically associated with sexual selection, uh, so under increasing variance in male mating success, this ratio decreases lower than three quarters. So with increasing promiscuity, you might expect to see elevated levels of genetic drift on the Z chromosome and then faster rates of Z chromosome divergence relative to the autosomes. So even though this explanation nicely fits the pattern I observed, I wanted to um, more rigorously distinguish between these two hypotheses. And I was able to do that using coding sequence data and expression data. So the first is that you can conduct tests to see whether the Z is enriched for genes that are evolving under positive selection. So I was first able to use um, coding sequence divergence data, and you don't see an enrichment of positively selected genes on the Z relative to the autosomes. You also see exactly the same pattern when you incorporate polymorphism data in a mcdonald kreitman test. And finally, you can even see an enrichment of synonymous polymorphism on the Z chromosome, which is indicative of a relaxation of selective constraint. So kind of these three tests really indicate that the Z doesn't appear to be a locus for positive selection relative to the autosomes. And finally, you can use gene expression to distinguish between these two hypotheses. And that's because if selection, if um, faster Z were driven by selection on um, recessive mutations in females, then you might expect to see the fastest rates of Z chromosome divergence for female biased genes greater than unbiased and male biased. But if faster Z were neutral, you'd expect to see no relationship with um, expression category of the gene. So the graph that I'm about to show you is one of many different approaches that we took that used different filtering criteria and different methods to define sex-biased genes. And they kind of really all show exactly the same pattern, which is that there's no significant difference in the rate of Z chromosome divergence with uh, sex-biased expression category. So these two kind of independent lines of evidence really indicate that avian faster Z is driven by relaxed purifying selection and that ultimately this is actually exacerbated by increasing promiscuity and increasing sexual selection. So uh, just to conclude, over the long term we see that the Z chromosome is masculinized for its male benefit effects. However, when we look across more short term dynamics, we see that the Z appears to be evolving with a significant contribution of genetic drift and that the magnitude of this drift actually increases as sexual selection increases. And ultimately there might be a trade-off between um, the strength of these two forces that ultimately limits the role that the Z can play in encoding sexually dimorphic phenotypes. Uh, so I'd just like to thank um, my supervisor Judith Mank and everyone in the Mank group who contributed to this work, um, to SSE for awarding me the Fisher Prize and uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you.